Welcome, beautiful thinkers. Sometimes it seems like our emotions are in this delicate balance where if we make the slightest mistake or if something unexpected happens to us, we'll plunge into doom, terror, despair. Well, maybe it's not all that serious. Let's talk about that. Welcome, beautiful thinkers. I'd like to talk about a certain delicate balance. Because I've been having some interesting experiences lately. Uh, Yeah, as I've mentioned previously, I do have this concept or this belief that something unusual is happening, some kind of cosmic shift. I can't necessarily prove that, but I think I'm not the only one who's having very intense emotions at the moment. And of course, having intense emotions, well, can be a good thing. It can be extremely uncomfortable if we don't know how to manage it. It's similar to in a dream. When we begin lucid dreaming, I'm still quite a novice on this path. But what happens is one of the most important lessons, the most fundamental lessons that we learn when we're lucid dreaming is to modulate our emotions, to maintain them within a good limit and within certain limits. So if they're too negative, like if we get too afraid, if we're if terror enters our hearts, or if we think, oh, wow, I'm in a dream, how fascinating, and we begin to fly, all of a sudden we get very excited and we wake up. <laughs> So keeping emotions within certain limits, knowing how to control our emotions, not necessarily control them, but ease them, guide them, pacify them when necessary. That's very important, of course, not just in lucid dreaming, but in our lives. Because if, (laughs) all right, we're not going to wake up if we make mistakes with our emotions in, in real life, but actually maybe the opposite will get stuck in some bad thought loops we might be very anxious we start to get confused go into some kind of negative spiral our anxiety leads leads us to dread and maybe we even have a panic attack think we're dying or something like that all right that can be pretty intense right (laughs) but um, also on on the other side i mean if we get too excited well, it can can make it difficult for us to control ourselves. Just like somebody taking a powerful drug, like if somebody's at a party and they take cocaine or, you know, men who are on steroids, they find it very difficult to exercise self-control. And these are the things that can happen. Of course, maybe that's not quite as much as a risk as having a panic attack, but well, maybe even the The excitement could cause us to have a panic attack if we're not modulating our emotions carefully. So what I found is over the last few months or even over the last year, I've noticed that sometimes what happens is I'll be feeling really good, really relaxed. And and there's this warm, fuzzy energy in my belly. And maybe it does have a little spark to it, a little excitement And then something that I perceive as bad happens, like someone doesn't want to talk to me or some, you know, it could could be anything or, you know, something with a project that I'm working on doesn't come out the way I, I expected or want it to. All right. And suddenly my emotions are going to this quite a dark place and, and they're quite intense. And, and I'm wondering, you know, why is it so swingy? <laughs> Why is it so variable? One moment I can be feeling extremely good and then I'm, I'm getting kind of stuck in this mire, trying to wade through the swamp and it feels like I'm just going slow. It feels like <laughs> like in a dream when you can't move, you know, when you're trying to run away from somebody and, you're, and your legs are stuck. It's what it can feel like. So what is the most important thing in these circumstances? I say 
Number one, you know, there's a very fundamental thing is breathe. So as Flo Perlin said in the in the interview that I did with her, when she had some uncomfortable thought or uncomfortable feeling, she said she would breathe through it, breathe into it, like we do practicing Hatha Yoga, breathe, breathe into our emotions, breathe into our, our muscles or our glands, our, our hormones, whatever is going on inside us, or the other way to, to look at it. I mean, I say these things <laughs> so many times in so many different ways. Part of the reason is they're worth repeating. They're that good. So <laughs> in the interview with my friend Georgia Cat, she said when she was feeling anxious, she sat with it, literally sat down and noticed the emotion and thought, okay, that is an emotion that is valid and it will pass. And it always does. Now, if we can find ourselves, well, sometimes I think, what am I doing? Am I walking a tightrope here? It's like I can be extremely happy, extremely high up on the tightrope. <laughs> and then what happens? I'm losing my balance a little bit. I fall and it's, it's tragic. Okay. But that's a tricky metaphor because... That, that implies that the stakes are so high and we're, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a little tricky. It implies that we're at constant risk of danger and maybe we should be afraid of our own emotions. So that's why I think, hey, it's not a very good metaphor. What I think is, is the better metaphor is something, well, take a, the pressure off us a little bit. Of course... Baba Muktananda wrote, wrote this book, Play of Consciousness, that I'm still reading. And yes, we can play in the world, just like what came up in my interview with Aaron Rogerson, talking about how when he felt more relaxed in the world, more at ease in the world, he could enjoy things more, more and things weren't such a big deal. Play of consciousness. Everything that happens is occurring in that space of consciousness. And it's like, it is like a play appearing before us in a scene on a stage. Something for our entertainment, perhaps, for our enjoyment, for our, even for our spiritual development. Because, of course, many plays have key moral lessons for us and they teach us something about life. Also a play, a play in the sense of it's it's not exactly a game, all right, because a game has a clear goal. We don't have a clear goal. This is more like a sandbox, a sandbox game, I guess. <laughs> uh, we can play and we can build things and, and create things, move, move through the world, playing, and things aren't so serious. So... I hope that <laughs> that helps because I'm sure there are people out there who are having these similar experiences or maybe they they uh, maybe you don't know how to guide your way through it quite as well as I do. So if, if that's the case, I, ho I hope that helps. Breathe into it, sit with it, and play with it. Nothing is so serious. Let's have a good time. Thanks for listening and... Have a blessed day. A beautiful thought. Thanks for coming along. So remember, we'll be resting on December 24th, 25th, 31st, and January 1st. Just in case you don't see those episodes coming up, you know what's happening <laughs> in advance. Be prepared for a little break in a beautiful thought. So I hope everyone is doing well, moving into the new year, prepared for new beginnings, and hopefully a fresh new perspective internally and externally. If you need some help with that, maybe you're at a crossroads in your life, you're not sure how to move forward, or the external situations are getting to you in a way that's very difficult to handle. Remember, I'm offering cognitive behavioral sessions, go on to a 
<laughs> what's the site? Beautifulpodcast.com. You see at the top in the header, it says CBT sessions, and you can book a session with me so we can talk it out, try to figure out what's going on internally, if there's any limiting beliefs that are holding you back, and how you can decide on beliefs and course of action that will be more beneficial for you. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.